Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. He has blessed us. Is that a past tense or a blessing us or will bless us? Bless us in the new year with all the spiritual blessings. No, 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 no. He has already blessed us. He has already blessed us. All we need to do is get in the shower. Amen. His blessings, His purpose for your life, His purpose, His work for your salvation, His work to make you His son and daughter and to, for your whole generation to do His will and to glorify His name and to fulfill your purpose, He has already done it. Amen. He has already done it. All you need to do is, is just receive it and accept it and appropriate it. Does it sound good? So it's all in your hands. The blessings, God has already released it. If you are to be blessed, you have to receive it. God has released it. You have to receive it. Now let's go to our text this morning. I want to have us read together Ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 to 20. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 to 20. Shall we all read together? If you have your Bibles or your phones, mobiles, whatever, turn it to it. If not, you can follow here and let's read together. I keep... Uh -huh. I thought let's read together. Is that okay? One more trial. I keep asking that God... Of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted. What happened? You're not following? No, come on, go on. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, you can do better. Hallelujah. Yes, this is a point to praise God. Because he has already blessed us. And Paul's prayer here is that we may know. Sometimes, many a times, we don't know what we have in store or in stock. We have to take stock to find out what we know, uh, what we have. And so, we can move in to take possession of what belongs to us. Let's say, for example, somebody has uh, given you an inheritance of a million dollar and uh, the mail comes to you. Okay, hope it's not a scam. Okay, the mail comes to you with a check, a million dollar check, and you just look at the mail and it is not familiar where it is coming from. I don't know this person. And so you just throw it off. Would you inherit that million dollar? You would not. Let's say you open the mail. Let's see what is in the mailer. And you take the check out. Here is a million dollar check named to you. 
Okay? What? A million dollar? For me? I don't believe it. I don't know this person. I don't believe this. Ah, this may be another scam. You tear it and throw. Would you inherit it? No, you would not. Until you take it to the banker and say, here is a check. This has been given to me. Can I take it? You have to believe it. You have to exercise, this, exercise it. And you have to gladly receive it. And then you will possess your blessing. Amen. As we move into 2024, may God grant us the growth, the eyes to see, to know, to believe and to understand and to walk in and to take possession of what God has called us to in His sovereign will and sovereign power. Amen. Uh-oh, you can do much better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's much better. Yeah, let's move on. What is God say, God's word saying here? Apostle Paul is praying for this dear church, his beloved church that he planted, and now he's writing to them, and he's saying to them, may God give you more than anything. Sometimes, you know, when we pray for people, we use the two or three words, Lord, bless them. And if they are sick, Lord, heal them. Uh, Lord, meet their needs. And then what? Lord, bless them. Lord, heal them. Lord, meet their needs. Surround them with your grace. And that's all. We run out of words. But Apostle Paul prays for the church here in Ephesus. He says that God may give you the God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the spirit of wisdom. Right in that one verse, you have all the Trinitarian persons mentioned there by name because they are all together in one voice wanting to have their purpose, their will exercised in your life. The Lord Jesus Christ who loves you so much that he gave his life for you. The glorious Father who is, the f who is full of glory, seated in the heavenly realms. Sovereign God, creator of the ends of the earth. And the Spirit of God who is in you, who is through you, who is working in and through your life. All the three of them may give you, what? Two things. Blessings, money. Salary, healing. No, 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 no. All that will come automatically. What they may give you, they'll give you wisdom. What is that wisdom? The wisdom to know Him more. The wisdom that will give you an insight to know what God has in store for you. Who God is and His love for your your life for, and the purpose that He has for your life and everything that God has for you that you may know by knowing Him better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here is a prayer that you can pray for anybody. Amen. And even pray for yourself. Lord, I want to know you better. Hallelujah. This year, 2024, Lord, more than anything else, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Lord, may I grow in your wisdom and what? Revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Jesus speaking to his disciples in, this, in Caesarea Philippi. He tells Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood did not give you this knowledge, but my father, it is by a revelation Friends, for times such as these, we need more of the revelation of God's glory. Amen. Hallelujah. The times that we are living in, we need more of God's power, more of God's wisdom, more of God's will revealed by the revelation of God, the Heavenly Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit so that we may know Him better. Hallelujah. We may know Him better. Let's move on to the next verse, what he says. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. A continuation of the first prayer. 
A continuation. What is the eyes of the heart? We know the two eyes that are on our face and we take care to, you know, trim it, make it nice and then color it or whatever kind of a thing. Or when it starts to fail, we put on something to make it see better. But what Paul is praying is not about the eyes. That While these eyes are as important as they may be, Paul is now praying for the eyes of your inner man. The eyes of your heart, your perception, your discernment, your understanding, the way that you can perceive and know what God's purpose is for your life, for the life of your family, for the life of your friends, for the life of people who are depending on you. Lord, what is your purpose that I may see and see it clearly? That your eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Enlightened. Lord, turn on the lights. Turn on the lights so that I can see you more. After that, our three-point sermon continues. Amen? What are the three things that you need to know out of that enlightenment? I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. Number one, that's my point one. Number two, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Number three, and his incomparably great power for us to believe. Hallelujah. Three points. Let's quickly unpack these three prayer points of Paul for our lives, for the lives of the efficient believers which is applicable to our lives today, the life of the people whom you love, your friends, your sons, your daughters, your family members that you can truly pray for. When your son's life or when your daughter's life or a member of your family, your brother or your sister, and their life is troubling you, pray that their hearts may be enlightened. Hallelujah. Their lives will be transformed that they may see God and know God more and better. Okay, let's move on. The first one he's praying for is that your eyes of the heart may be enlightened to know the hope to which he has called you. Go to the next slide, please. The hope. The hope. What is this hope? that Paul is talking about. You know, we use this word hope a number of times in many, many ways. I hope it doesn't rain today. Or, I hope I, I'm able to call this person. I've been trying, trying. I hope I'm able to reach out. You know, I hope my friend comes and visits me. Or I hope this will turn out to be good. You know, it is something that we all desire, that we want to happen, a wishful thinking that probably will make us feel better or be better or do better. Okay, that's the hope that we normally use. But what Paul is talking about here is not that kind of wishful thinking. Go on to the next slide. The hope, next is the hope of his calling. It's not your wishful thinking. It is about yes. his calling. You know, if you wish for something, it may happen yes. or it may not happen. You get it? It may happen. It may turn out to be good right. or it may not work out. Yes. But if it is based on his calling, hallelujah, it's not mm -mm, this way, that way. It is not about something that you desire or something that you may want or something like that, but it is something that He has called you to. And therefore, He is the initiator. 
He is the one who is calling you to. Go to the next one. It is his initiative. We are not worthy. I cannot claim it. I don't deserve it. And yet he follows after me relentlessly. Amen. Because he wants to fulfill his hope in your life. His hope in your life. And therefore, it is His calling, His initiative. Go to the next. It is guaranteed already by not only putting down His own Son to make sure that you will receive His hope. He has also paid the down payment of His Holy Spirit who lives within you as the guarantee of his calling that he is concerned about you. He is about to do something that you cannot imagine. You have never imagined. You have not deserved it. You cannot earn it. You cannot pay for it. But you just need to receive it. And it is definite. It's not going to deceive you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the hope. And what is this hope? Is it a million dollar lottery? It is something better than that. Amen. Go to the next slide. It is the assurance of a life with Him forever. Hallelujah. A life with Him forever. What is this forever? We just have no mind to even conceive what is this forever. It is the love that He has showered upon you to receive you, to embrace you, and to, and to give you the hope and the future that you have never imagined. Amen. For His glory and for His purpose. And it is that hope. May your hearts, the eyes of your heart be enlightened. So that you may be able to see and discern yes. and walk in and possess, receive and be blessed in this hope of His calling Amen. in the life in His presence forever. Is it something that is coming when I die? You know, hope is usually used to something that will be future. So is this hope something will happen when I die? It is something that has already happened. Amen. It is the life that you're already enjoying. Come what may. Be it sickness. Be it failure. Be it challenges. Be it problems. Be it, be it whatever the circumstances, enmity, or whatever that you may be going through. His presence is always with you. Whatever you are walking through, whether be, your, whether, whether be it in the valley of shadow of death, He's not going to leave you. He will never forsake you. Hallelujah. You know, David prayed this beautiful prayer after he sinned against God. He was so scared of more than anything else, one thing. Lord, please do not take your spirit from me. He did not know Romans chapter 8, right? Because nothing will separate His love. Nothing will take you out of His love. Even your sin. Sometimes when we commit something stupid, you know, we think, oh, God must be really angry with me after I have done this. God must be forsaking me. No, He's pursuing after you. He's not willing to let you go. The brother testified, being a pastor's son, I strayed a bit. Yeah, we all stray. You may stray. Sometimes you may do a stupid thing. But God's love is pursuing after you. Stop right there. Turn around and say, Lord, take me in. And His love will embrace you. And you will know that He is already on your side. Amen. That's the joy Amen. of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. May your heart, the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you know 
the assurance of his call upon your life the assurance of this hope to which he has called you number 2 let's quickly move on and secondly he prays that they may know go on to the next the inheritance the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints okay i like that picture you know the picture of a key okay the inheritance is something that comes to us which we have not worked for got it it's not something that you have worked for you have not labored for it it's not your salary okay your inheritance is is given to you okay and other than the story of the sec- the two sons you know it usually happens after the father dies correct the inheritance comes to you after the father dies to make sure of that jesus already died and he rose again from the dead so that you can have the inheritance already amen okay what is this inheritance it is something that you don't deserve you have not earned you have not you know worked for it but it is something that god gives you or has given you already all you need to do it is receive and possess that's it inheritance yes. now the, the the last portion of this uh, scripture the what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints you know sometimes scholars have had different opinions and some have mentioned oh this is the inheritance that Christ has in you or in the saints yes by doing what he did his inheritance is that we are his children we have become Christ we have be- we have come to belong to Christ but there is enough evidence to show that Paul is not really talking about the inheritance of Christ but actually he is talking about our inheritance in Christ hallelujah our inheritance in Christ there are enough textual evidence this is not the only place that Paul is talking about our inheritance in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 you can go to the next i think i may have Now, it is our in here acts chapter 20 and verse 32 he says now i commit you to god and to the word of his grace his last prayer with his believers there on the beach which can which can build you up and give you an inheritance give you an inheritance so whose inheritance it is it is our inheritance it is not christ's inheritance it is our inheritance among all those who are being sanctified yes it is given in the context of all the saints all the believers all those who have come to receive jesus christ yes for all of us who are the saints here would the saints say amen, amen. oh thank god hallelujah we are the saints sometimes we get doubt about it we get jittered am i really a saint yes you are in god in christ god sees you as a saint and he has called you to an inheritance and paul is saying here that your inmost being will be open to receive this inheritance that he has in store for you and step in to go ahead and enjoy it okay when the key is given what do you need to do what do you need to do just receive it that, that's it just take it it's for you don't look behind oh it's for me or for somebody else it's for you it is his inheritance for you for you Amen. for you for every one of you for every one of you he has this inheritance all you need to do it is step in and receive that we may become the heirs of god and joint heirs 
with Christ. That's what Paul says. You are the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to who? You know, you're doubtful? Go ahead and say, it belongs to me. Whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to me. Hallelujah. That is the glory of his calling. Come into your inheritance. Come into his inheritance. You know, in the story of the two sons, this younger fellow, he took what was his father's and he claimed it as his. Well, his father did not really challenge him, gave his share. He took it away and went, squandered it and then came back and said to the father, what? I have sinned against you. But what did the father say? Come on, you have heard that sermon a number of times, the prodigal father, right? Okay, go ahead. What did the father say? Come in. Come in and enjoy the inheritance. Yes. The in enjoy the inheritance. It is for this purpose I have called you. It is for this purpose I have waited for you all my life. I was looking for this very day when you will come back. Come into my joy. Hallelujah. Come into this celebration. The fellowship of Christians, the fellowship of believers is the sphere in which the inheritance of God is found. Move on to the third. The eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the immeasurable... Something happened to the display? Okay. Uh, the immeasurable greatness of His power. Okay? We Pentecostals are the power people, right? Yes? Some of you, looks like some of you are not very comfortable calling yourself a Pentecostal. Jesus. Assembly of God is Pentecostal. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you did not know it yet, it is a revelation. We are called the Pentecostals, classical Pentecostals. And therefore Paul, I mean, you know, this power word is our word. You know, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You will receive power. Power. We like that power word. And what is the word translation, translated from? Huh? Dunamis. And we say, dunamis is the same root for dynamite. And therefore, that kind of a power. Yes, it is power. God is powerful. But it is not about some impersonal, some, you know, blast power. A power that can blast a rock or the power of a lightning. It, that's not what Paul is talking about here. He's talking about incomparably great power. How much is the power? Great power. You know, Diwali, we have these crackers, right? The more noise, the more blast that it can give, it is the better, and therefore you have to pay for it. You have the small, tiny power also, but even that is harmful, you know. But there is also the big power of the Diwali cracker, but there, is, there are also greater powers. You can probably think of a nuclear bomb. No, I don't want to even think about it, right? It's a huge power. But you know what? The power of God who created the heavens and the earth is, as Paul says, it is incomparably great power. Paul is actually running out of words because in trying to illustrate this kind of power, the whole verse in chapter 2, 1 and verse 20, he expends the whole verse to show what is the nature of this power. This is a constructive power. This great power, it is like in verse 20, he says, 
uh, verse 19, he says, that power is the same as the mighty strength. You know what? I'm not a Greek scholar. You can clarify it with Pastor Jacob or Pastor Gavin. There are four power words in Greek that Paul uses here. Okay? Go to the next. Ah, yeah. I put all the four power words. I don't know the minute meanings and all that. You can clarify it with them. Power. Dunamis. Yeah, he has used it. He's, say, he's using the next power word. It is the working of that power. This power is used for something constructive. You know, these days, young people go to the, the gym. And they do, and they go and do the workout. Okay? But they, their workout is useful only for their muscles and power. Power building. When you come home and you give them some work, they won't do it. I have two sons. Maybe you can edit it when you put it on YouTube, right? Okay. That's not about purposeless power building that Paul is talking about. This power is the same power that God exercised in raising Jesus up from the grave. The dead man raised to life and not just raised to life, raised above and seated him on his right hand far above all the powers and authorities and rulers of the world. That's the power he has for who now? For who? Whether you believe it or not, it's for you. For us who believe. For us who believe. If you have a million dollars, what would you do? You know, you know, in these uh, programs, you know, television programs, Kon Banega, Kropati, or uh, America's Got Talent, you know, the big prize. The question is usually asked, if you win the prize, what would you do? May I ask you this question? If this incomparably great power for us what would you do? What would you do? Friends, that's the love of God and the purpose of God and the trust of God in His church, in His saints, in the people who have come to believe and trust and walk with Him in the people that he showered his love upon. That's your life. That's your calling. That is your future. Don't pass it on to the future. That's your present. If you believe, come and position yourself under the flow of the shower. That is what I want to wish you for 2024. Not just 2024, but for the rest of your life. Amen. Come and take possession of that which God has for you. Not just to expend your, all of it to yourself, but for His glorious praise that He will be glorified in and through your life, your word, your thought, your action, your duties, your walk, your talk. Everything will be immersed with God's purpose and for His glory. Hallelujah. That God will truly be pleased to the extent when He finally sees you, He will say, well done, my good and my faithful servant. Well done, my good and my faithful yes. servant. Looking at you, he will say, this is my beloved. 
I am pleased with him. I am pleased with her. This is my beloved. Would you be that man? Would you be that woman? Would you be that family? Would you be that church? Would you be the community where God would truly be delighted and pleased at your worship, at your works, at your goodness, at your faithfulness, His blessings will attend you. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not changing. He's faithful. He was faithful in 2023. He will still remain faithful in 2024 or until you see Christ. He will still remain faithful. He's still a blessing God. He's still a promise-keeping God. He's still a prayer-answering God. He's still a God who will never leave you nor forsake you. Whatever that you may go through, He's still a God who will fulfill all your needs. Hallelujah. But would you stand up to be that man or a woman and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Here am I, Lord. I'm available. Use me. May I know the depths of the riches of the wisdom of the glory of God. That I may not only be an ordinary person walking this way, but be your son, your daughter, your representative, your ambassador, and do something to make a difference in this life that you have given me because of your great love and because of your great power that is at work in my life.